What's up guys? I hope you're all having a great day. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm just going to give some of my thoughts and expectations for the upcoming season of The Mandalorian and also give some updated takes on some other things as well, like uh, Grogu's return in the Book of Boba Fett and whatever else comes to mind as I navigate through this topic. So let's just go ahead and start things out with Grogu and his escape from the Jedi Temple. That's the big question everyone has, who saved Grogu? Now the possibilities with this are pretty limitless and I feel like the more time that passes, the more, uh, proposals and ideas come to the table and a lot of them are reasonable because his story's pretty wide open so i've said in the past that my preference um for who saved grogu from the temple would be barris offy i just feel like that would be a really interesting way to take the story it would be kind of a cool potential redemption arc for Barris, and she could also uh, show up in the Ahsoka series uh, and her story could develop from there and I think that would be pretty cool. And we have had some hints of that. Barriss's crest was on the wall of the Jedi Temple in Grogu's flashback in the Book of Boba Fett. So while that's not confirmation by any means, there's reason to believe that Barriss is definitely a candidate. We also have Quinlan Voss, who was revealed to be a survivor of Order 66 in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. We have Jocasta Nu, who was the librarian in the Jedi temple and knew the ins and outs of the temple and she also did survive order 66 so she could have saved grogu we have reva who obviously became a candidate during the kenobi series um and then there's obviously the possibility that a jedi who we've never met before or just a lesser known jedi could have been responsible i've seen people throw out r2d2 who seems pretty unlikely but he was in the jedi temple at some point in and around order 66 obviously mace windu could be a candidate if he survived although i'm somebody who kind of thinks Mace Windu's probably dead. I just think that's the more logical story. Um, and I feel like bringing him back is a bit of a force. And then there's an idea that I just came across this morning, actually. And that is that Palpatine actually gave an order to protect Grogu as he did with Anakin. The clones, as we know, are programmed to kill all of the Jedi. Any Jedi they see outside of Anakin Skywalker is an enemy of the Republic and they are to be killed. And so I do think it's extremely unlikely that Palpatine would have tried to protect Grogu, but it is possible that he made some exception and Grogu is another one of these members alongside Anakin who Palpatine wanted to protect from Order 66. Obviously, there's a reason that the Empire wanted Grogu, and maybe that goes back all the way to Order 66 and before. It's also possible and maybe even likely that Palpatine didn't even know who Grogu was. Obviously, Darth Sidious didn't know every single Jedi in the galaxy, but it's also possible that he did know him and for some reason or another, he wanted Grogu and so he ordered the clones to uh, extract him from the Jedi Temple. I don't think that's going to be the case, but it is a possibility. We're really not going to know who saved Grogu until we see it in the series, so this is all just speculation. Um, everybody's got their preferences, but once we do find out who saved him the question is how did he get to where he was when we found him in the mandalorian and one way that i could see this going and this would tie in with another series that's currently coming out right now would be for the bad batch to actually find grogu and that's not to say that they saved him from the temple obviously they didn't but after he was saved could it be possible that the Bad Batch finds Grogu on one of their missions and then, you know, over time, maybe they protect him or maybe they give him away to somebody else who says they can take care of him. Who knows where that would go? But maybe they find him and, you know, they take care of him and then... As time goes on, the Bad Batch dies because obviously they uh, age a lot quicker than the average person. But Omega is a pure clone of Jango Fett and she's going to live much longer than them. So Omega keeps Grogu, potentially. This is all just a theory. And it's not even something that I think is very likely to happen. But it's possible. So Omega keeps Grogu and then... You know, she stores him away at this place that we found him in, in the Mandalorian, and she's away from him for some time for one reason or another, and then Din Djarin comes and finds him. There's a bounty on him, Omega's been protecting him from the Empire, and Din Djarin finds him, Omega returns, and Grogu's gone. So she goes in search of Grogu, and then maybe Din Djarin and Omega run into each other at some point during Season 3 of The Mandalorian, or at some point later on. Of course, if the Bad Batch did find him, that story could go in a completely different direction as well, but I do think that 
you know, that there's an outside chance of that happening. The biggest reason that I don't think it would happen is just because I don't think they're going to continue to tell Grogu's story in an animated series that a lot of people who watch The Mandalorian won't be watching. So they'd never really get to know that whole truth. So it'd be kind of weird. But I do think it's possible that um, we could see Grogu show up in the Bad Batch in that way. And then they could kind of make it so that you don't need to watch the Bad Batch to understand uh, Grogu's past because they'll tell pieces of it in the Mandalorian as well. Again, I just think this is like an outside chance, but you know, why not entertain all possibilities? But staying on this same track of, you know, overlapping multiple shows and telling different stories across multiple series, I want to go back to Grogu's return in the book of Boba Fett and the way that uh, that's what you know, Dave Filoni and the writers at Lucasfilm decided to do. It's kind of been like a funny thing for me to think about because I know there are a lot of people who didn't watch the Book of Boba Fett. Uh, there's a lot of people who are just, you know, quote unquote, baby Yoda fans who really only watch the Mandalorian because of him. And they're probably going to tune into Mandalorian season three, or they probably watched the trailer that just came out. And they're like, how did Din Djarin and Grogu get back together? Like, what happened? You know, what did I miss? And I think there's valid arguments on both sides here. Part of me says that Grogu should have stayed away from Din Djarin for a while. And this is honestly, this is where my lean is. I think Grogu should have stayed away from Din Djarin through at least part of season three, maybe the entirety, and then they could reunite at some point later on. And we would see that reunion take place in The Mandalorian, in that show. But then the other part of me says, does it really matter that they reunited in the book of Boba Fett? Like, is that really something to make a big gripe about? Because this is not the first time that we've had to watch other shows to understand key plot points. For example, you absolutely have to watch The Clone Wars to understand how Maul is alive in Rebels and Solo. You should definitely watch the prequels and the originals if you want to understand the sequels. Now, movies are completely different and I understand that, but it's the same concept. And the book of Boba Fett is simply another installment to the Mandalorian era story. Now, should they have marketed it that way and made that a bigger deal and perhaps advertised that, hey, if you want to watch the Mandalorian season three and understand it, you should probably watch the book of Boba Fett? Yeah, probably. But my thing with it is I just hope that Filoni and the writers who decided to make that decision didn't choose to reunite Grogu with Din Djarin just because fans were, you know, emotional about Grogu leaving Din Djarin. I hope that there was a plan with this and they didn't send Grogu off with Luke Skywalker having no idea what they were going to do with it. And then they were like, oh crap, you know, what are we going to do here? And then they were like, well, let's just throw Grogu back with Din Djarin in the book of Boba Fett. I don't know what happened. None of us know what happened for sure. And we're probably never going to know what went into these decisions and how all of that played out. But it's just my hope that there is a plan here and there's a reason that Grogu went with Luke Skywalker and then got back with Din Djarin so quickly. And it wasn't just, oh crap, I think we made a mistake, but it was really cool to have Luke Skywalker in The Mandalorian. So, uh, you know, that was cool, but now we're going to throw Grogu back because it was kind of a mistake to send him away. I'm not saying that you have to have everything planned out from the jump. Um, I think it's okay to kind of make things up as you go to some degree, but sending Grogu away with Luke Skywalker is kind of a really big deal. I said after the series came out that I really didn't care. Like, they were probably going to get back together at some point, and I really liked how they told that story in the book of Boba Fett. And I still do feel that way. Like it is what it is. And I'm just interested to see where they go with the story from here. But that whole ordeal kind of leads us to a couple of more questions about Grogu and his time with Luke. The first one being, how much did Grogu learn in the time that he spent with Luke Skywalker? And the second being, how long were they actually together? Or, I mean, I guess you could flip-flop those questions. But did Grogu do some serious learning while he was with Luke? Did he really just unlock the abilities that he had used in the past as Luke kind of alludes to uh, when he's talking to Ahsoka about Grogu's training. Basically, my question is, how powerful is Grogu? And is he going, I mean, the trailer shows that he does use the force, but is Grogu going to continue to develop in his force abilities? Or is he just kind of going to slowly go the other way? I think Grogu will continue to use the force. I think 
it's actually a real possibility that at some point in the future, Grogu will become the Mandalore. He will become the leader of the Mandalorians. Obviously, wielding the Darksaber, as I've said in the past, is a bit of a problem because uh, Grogu is pretty small and the Darksaber is pretty big. But, you know, modifications can be made and I don't know. I think it seems pretty likely. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Do you think Grogu will become the leader of Mandalore at some point? Uh, do you think he'll be the next Mandalore? Do you think that's Din Djarin, Sabine, Bo-Katan? What do you think is going to happen with that? Uh, I think there's a pretty decent chance that at some point... Grogu will uh, take the proverbial throne of Mandalore. And that kind of leads me to another question, which is, is Grogu becoming a Mandalorian? During the trailer, it looks like uh, Din Djarin, I assume he's talking to Grogu, although we don't really know, but it seems like Din Djarin's teaching Grogu the ways of the Mandalorians, which are at least the ways that Din Djarin knows. There's different creeds and different ways that the Mandalorians live, but Din Djarin is teaching Grogu what he knows about the Mandalorian way of life. And so the question is, is will Din Djarin just kind of continue to act as Grogu's protector or will Grogu become a Mandalorian relatively soon? And then on that same train of thought, going into season three, one of the big questions that I think a lot of people have is how far will Bo-Katan be willing to go to get the dark saber? Is she willing to fight Din Djarin for it? Has she kind of given up on that? What's her outlook on Din Djarin? How does she view him? And how important is it to her now to get the dark saber? And then that kind of brings up a whole lot of questions from season two that we're probably going to have answered in season three. Like, where is Moff Gideon? What's his endgame? Is he going to play a role going forward? What was up with the whole Snoke thing when we saw a figure that looked very much like Snoke's body in one of those Bakta tanks? Is Snoke going to begin to loom over the story? Will we get into Palpatine's contingency? Will we begin to hear whispers of the First Order? Will we hear whispers of Snoke? I'm really interested to see how they continue to develop this uh, story as we build toward the sequel trilogy. We had the very early workings of Luke Skywalker's Jedi Temple in the Book of Boba Fett. We've had hints about Snoke and the New Republic, and we had somebody in the trailer say something like, there's something dangerous out there, and by the time uh, you realize what it is or something like that, it'll be too late. Um, I assume that he was talking about the First Order, or, you know, some variation of Palpatine's contingency, or Snoke, or something along those lines. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do with that. But, you know, time will tell on that. We don't really have any idea where that's going to go. At least I don't. I really don't get into spoilers at all. Like, a lot of creators I know are, like, out looking for spoilers, or at least if they run into them, they'll, like, click on them and they want to know what's going to happen. Me, I, like, I want to avoid spoilers at all costs. So... I really do not go looking for them, and if I see them, I do not click on the links. I'm like, get that away from me. I really like to take these projects as they come, take them for what they are, and not get caught up in too much of the uh, spoilers and stuff like that. It's fun to theorize and like imagine what might happen, but it's important, one, to not get too attached to your personal expectations, um, and then two, it just takes away from the fun of it for me to find out what's going to happen beforehand. Um, and it can really ruin your experience, in my opinion. But uh, to each their own, um, I'm going to continue to avoid spoilers. Maybe you guys already know about all this stuff that I'm talking about, and there's big leaks out there. I have no idea, but um, yeah, keep those away from me. One final question that I have going into this series, and it's not really a big deal either way, but I'm sure some people are wondering, is will Din Djarin remove his helmet again? Because in the trailer, he says that he's going to Mandalore basically to be forgiven for his sins. That's not exactly what he says, but something like that. Din Djarin is obviously still committed to his Mandalorian creed and he wants forgiveness. He has no intention, it doesn't seem, of ever removing his helmet again. Now, I would definitely anticipate that he's probably going to do that and he's probably going to meet more Mandalorians who do do the same, removing their helmet, that is. And he's really going to come to see that he's been a part of a very small and close-minded group of Mandalorians and there's a lot of other Mandalorians out there who do not think the way he does and who are really on a completely different side than he was during the Mandalorian Wars and um, everything that took place during the Clone Wars and all of that stuff. But let me know what you guys think about all of this. Share your thoughts on The Mandalorian Season 3, what you're expecting, what you'd like to see. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and you're excited about this upcoming season of The Mandalorian, remember to drop a like to support the channel. Subscribe to the channel for future Star Wars content. And until next time, remember, the Force will be with you always.